Hey kids, welcome back to Children Worship. We're so glad to have you with us today. So John John, how was your week? My week was great and also very happy because I finished all my work and I'm learning a new instrument, the violin. So what are we going to be talking about today? So last week we wrapped up our sermon series about faith and today we invited a special guest to share with us during the sermon time what it means to put faith into action. So John John, now that we've finished with our faith sermon series, do you think you have faith? Of course I have faith. You do, do you? You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says this, Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. So what is genuine? Genuine means it's real. Are you able to tell what's real? Let's do an activity together. Let's go. Okay. Guess it's my turn. All right, so as you can see, we got a number of items here on the table and you're probably wondering what we're going to be doing with them. So today, we're going to be doing an activity called The Real Deal. We want you kids at home and John John to see if you can tell which of these items are real and which of these items are not real. So we have three sets, so let's start with the first one. All right, so the first set of items that I want to show you are these transformer toys in their original packaging. Now one of them is the real deal and one of them is not. So let's examine them and see if we can tell which one is genuine and which one is not. All right, John John, take a look. And you kids, take a close look too. Hmm. All right, now let's take a look at the second one. Can you tell which one is real? All right. So John John, which one do you think is real and which one do you think is not? I don't really know because they look exactly the same. Ah, they do look exactly the same, right? Same type of packaging and similar looking toy, right? So let me tell you kids which it is. This one is a toy that I own since 1984. This one is the real deal. It's a transformer toy that I kept since I was a young kid. And this one is not the real one. This is actually a replica of the original transformer toy with the original packaging. So how can I know, how can I tell if this is fake or not? Well, it's easy. On the front, it's supposed to say Dinobot Commander. But this one says Dinobot Bombammer. <laughs> so this is absolutely is the fake one. Good job kids if you guessed it right. All right, let's go to the next set. Next set, we have two fruits here. Now one of them is an apple and one of them is not. Can you kids tell which one it is? How about you, John John? Want to examine them? See which one is genuine and is the real deal and which one is not. What do you think, kids? All right. I think this one is real because this has a hole and the bottom of an apple doesn't have holes. Oh, really? What do you kids think? So, John John actually guessed it right. This is the real apple and this one is not. From far away, they both look like apple, but this one right here is actually another type of fruit. It's called a pomegranate. And some of your parents probably know this and eat this too. Good job, John John. And if you guessed it right at home, good job, kids. All right, so for our last set of items here, I got two Lego figures. One of them is a real deal, genuine Lego figure, and one, the other one, is not. Can you tell which one is real and which one is not? Let's examine them. Take a closer look, huh? What do you kids think? All right, so have you made your guess? How about you, John John? Which one do you think is real? And which one do you think is fake? 
I really don't know. <laughs> you don't know. How about you kids? Can you tell? Well, if you're not able to tell, <clears throat> it's quite normal because they really look both like Legos, right? But since I bought them, I know which one is real and which one is fake. So this one right here is the real deal. This one is a genuine, a real Lego figure. While this one looks like a Lego, but it's actually from a company called Sembo Blocks. They make product that looks like Lego, but they're actually not Lego. So this is the fake one. Good job, kids, and good job, John John. All right, so let's finish this up by clearing the table. So yeah, a lot of people say they have faith, but how can you really tell? I mean, really, when you look at someone's life, sometimes you really can't tell whether they have faith or not because they're not doing what God says they need to do. They say it, they think it, they might even believe in it, but they don't do it. You know, the only way to test out our faith is to put faith into action. All right, let's go back. Awesome. Hey, let's say hi to Teacher King and Elias. Hey, Teacher King. Hey, Elias. Can you share about your experience about time when you had to put faith into action? Hi, Teacher Dixon. Hi, John John. So for our faith story, uh, for Teacher King, I remember about a year ago when we were coming back from Hong Kong, uh, back to LA, we had a layover flight in um, Tokyo. So we'll be a touch and you know, four hour later fly. But our flight got delayed because of the weather. And then that was the first time that Teacher King um, had to miss a plane, miss our connecting flight to Los Angeles. So I was kind of worried and I had you know, Elias, Matthew, um, Teacher Sharon, and we were really tired. So I prayed and um, hoping that everybody, everything will work out. And we were able to get the airline to um, pay for our hotel. And uh, we got an extra night stay in Tokyo. And it turned out really fun. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So what's your faith story? My faith story is when I hurt my knee really badly during a football game. And I was really scared that it was severe. And I worried um, Yeah, it was really painful. And I prayed to God that it would that bad and then soon enough I learned that it wasn't it was only a state one knee injury. Right, you're fully better huh? Yeah. Awesome sharing guys! You know our faith is only genuine when we test it out by putting our faith into action. Yeah and with that let's start our worship. Today Carice will do the opening prayer for us. Take it away Carice. focus our hearts during the lesson so we can learn about the, how to put faith into action. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Hello! Good morning, boys and girls! It's so good to see you all again on Sunday. Now for today's lesson, we're going to learn about putting our faith in action. Now for this first song we're going to sing is I'm trusting you, Lord. Wherever you go, I'm going to follow, Lord. So sometimes our lives get crazy or wild, but no matter what, we're going to follow Jesus. So are you guys ready to sing the song with Brianna and Carissa again? Okay, let's stand up, get ready. We're going to sing this song together. Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow. I'm 
trust in you, God. You are good. Life will get crazy. Well, get amazing. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. Life will get crazy. Trusting you, God, you are good. Walk through the valley, climb mountains high. Wherever we go, Lord, you are good. Can't hold me back, now I'm gonna fly. Wherever we go, Lord, you are good. Walk through the valley, climb mountains high. Wherever we go, Lord, you are good. Hold me back now, I'm gonna fly Wherever we go, Lord, you are good I wanna live each day like anything can happen Can hardly wait to see what's next I wanna face this world with wonder and excitement Face every challenge, every test Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow I'm trusting you, God, you are good. Life will get crazy, wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. Life will get crazy, wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. I'm sure most of you know how to sing this song, but we haven't sang for so long. Father Abraham had many sons. Are you ready for the fun hand motion? Okay, let's do it. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you.
a storm! Setsum, hang on! Hang on! Let's get through this! Let's go! Let's have more faith! Hang on! Don't fall off! Hey! There's Jesus! Let's fix our eyes on Jesus and put our faith in action. Let's go! Today, Teacher Esther will teach us how to put faith into action. Let's listen. Hey boys and girls, Teacher Esther here. It's been a long time since we've seen each other and I just wanted to tell you that I miss you, I'm praying for you, and I'm excited to share the Word of God with you. So with that, let's start reading together Matthew 14, 22 to 36. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side when he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick, and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched it were made well. Now this is the second time we've seen the disciples get caught in the storm. The first time Jesus was in the boat with them and he calmed the sea. This time Jesus comes to them from the shore, not on the boat, but walking on water. Then when Peter asked Jesus for permission, he actually steps out of the boat and starts to walk on water himself. This is not science, guys. This is a miracle. Now it's one thing for the Son of God to walk on water. It's quite another for an ordinary man to do the same. Now Peter was a sinner, a flawed and imperfect follower of Jesus, but he was able to do the impossible because he had faith. If it wasn't yeah, if it wasn't for that faith, Peter wouldn't be able to walk on water. It was Jesus who gave him the ability to do so. Now God wants each of us to have a faith like Peter's. He wants us to believe that Jesus can do the impossible in our lives. When we have that kind of faith, God can do amazing things through us. Now it's hard to believe that God can do miraculous things through us. It was hard for Peter to believe that Jesus could do anything through him. That doubt is why Peter started to sink beneath the waves. When Peter looked at the waves, he took his eyes off of Jesus. He remembered that he was no miracle man, but just a common fisherman. He remembered he can't walk on water, and he stopped walking on water. I have no doubt Peter could have walked all the way to Jesus and back if he kept his eyes on Jesus. But I think it's good that Peter looked away when he did. Now, I don't mean it's good that Peter sank, but I mean, we can learn from Peter's mistakes. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. Peter let doubt get in the way of his faith. That's the only reason Peter fell into the water that night. Guys, God is counting on us to take the good news of Jesus to the world. If we have faith in Jesus, God can use us to do amazing things. We can help the needy, we can bring hope to the hopeless, and we can help people who are angry at God or angry at Christians to see that Jesus really loves them. In order to do these things, we need to have faith. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. If we are focused on Christ, nothing is impossible for us. 
Now we may not be able to walk on water, but we can make a real difference in this world, in our community, and in the people closest to us. Now we're gonna watch a clip about someone who had faith in themselves to do something amazing. Let's watch. I can fly. No, you can't. <laughs> yes, I can. You can't. Can. Can't, can't, can't. I can tell you, I can fly around this room with my eyes closed. Okay then, Mr. Lightbeer, prove it. All right, then I will. Stand back, everyone. To infinity and beyond! Now, who, uh, who has watched that movie before? I love that movie. My kids love that movie. That's the greatest movie. Anyways, now Buzz, Buzz Lightyear, he had faith in himself to fly, and he did. If we have faith in God and if we acted on it, we can do the impossible with God. Now, we're talking about faith in action. What does that mean? It's about how we live our lives, the way we love people, how kind we are about putting what we believe into practice. Most of us pray every night, right? Why do we pray? Because it's real. We may not be able to physically look at Jesus and walk on water, but we can pray to him in faith. Now, some of you may already know I'm a police officer. Every day I face uncertainties when I go out and call to help people. I don't know if the people I'm talking to, if they wanna help me or if they wanna hurt me. Now I have to have faith that this is what God wants me to do when I decided to become a police officer. As some of you older kids may be aware, not everybody likes the police. As some of you uh, may know, we face prosecution and anger for just doing our jobs. Now I'm not saying that everyone is perfect. Peter wasn't perfect, but God used him to show that Peter can have faith in God. God can use ordinary people like me and you to make a difference in this world for him. I'll give you an example. One day at work, I had a call where someone saw a mom crying in her car with her daughter in the back seat. They were worried and wanted to make sure she was okay. So I approached her and I asked her what was wrong. The mom told me that she was a single mom and her daughter wasn't listening to her. Her daughter was being so bad that she just broke down and wanted to cry. The mom had no other help and was desperate. I told her that I'm a mom too and sometimes I get frustrated and I get angry as well. And I told her, I'm never, an, an, I'm never alone because I have God in my life. I have faith that God will take care of my situation and of my life. I then invited her and her daughter to church and I gave her my number and said if she needed any help she could call me. Now I had to put my faith into action. God used me in that situation to help this mom and this daughter. God used my work as a police officer to encounter people I've never met to help and to serve them. Now every day before I start my shift as a police officer, I pray that God will use me in miraculous ways to help people in my community. But in order for me to believe that God will use me, I need to put my faith into action. Now I ask that you pray for me as much as I will pray for you. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for giving us Peter as an example of faith. Even though he took his eyes off of you, he still had faith to walk on water. God, help us to help others. Help us to put our faith into action. I pray for all of us that we would use that we would be used by you. I pray that our faith in you would increase so that we can put our faith in action to serve and help people around us. I pray for all the boys and girls listening that you would take away all their temptations so that they can focus on you. I pray that we would all be able to fix our eyes on Jesus so that we can do miraculous things through you. We love you and we pray that you would help us shower your love on others as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now don't doubt the power of God to do great things in your life. 
Have faith. Believe that Jesus can do miracles through your hands, and you'll be amazed at what you do next. See you next time. Thank you, Teacher Esther, for that awesome sermon. And now, Lisa is going to read today's memory verse. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. James 2.17 What's, what's up, up segment, segment number one? one? So for what's up segment number one, we have three very important announcements. So please pay close attention. For our first announcement, it's about our kids' virtual groups. We're so thankful and so blessed to have over 70 kids signed up so far. And we can't wait to meet with you guys online. Right now, we're gathering all of our teachers and leaders to do this together. And we hope we have enough so that no kids will be placed on a waiting list. So this Wednesday, October 14th, will be the last day to register. So kids, if you haven't registered yet, please ask your parents to do so. And our next announcement is Missions Conference. Next Sunday, our church's Missions Conference is a time when we can learn more about how God is mobilizing His people to share the gospel around the world, and more importantly, how we can participate. So for next Sunday's video, we have invited our English pastor, Reverend Keith. He will share to us about missions. Mark your calendar because Reverend Keith is a super duper fun pastor. And for our third and final announcement, it's about our Thanksgiving Children Virtual Choir. So this Thanksgiving, we're gonna be dedicating a song to show how thankful we are to God even during this crazy year. So kids, we need you to participate to record for this virtual choir, to sing this song, Give Thanks, and also to share about things that we're thankful for and teacher Blenda will be leading us. She'll be sharing with us more information about this choir and also to send us a video to show us how we can do the recording. So kids, in the coming week, we'll be sending an email to your parents with more information and to have you kids start signing up. Now this is a very meaningful way for us to uh, serve God during the Thanksgiving holiday and also as a way to share His love with others. So please look for this email this coming week. So now let's move on to the next segment. What's up segment number two? One million Instagram followers in under five hours. Instagram. What is Instagram? Well, Instagram is an American photo and video sharing social networking service owned by Facebook. Basically, it is a website where people can share their photos and videos. And the exciting thing about Instagram is that if people enjoy what you share, you will gain followers who will continue to check out what you post next. And if you are popular, you have lots of followers. Really? I want to have a lot of followers. Hmm. I wonder how many followers a Disney actor would have. How about you, Brianna? Who would you want to check out on Instagram? Hmm. I wonder how many followers LeBron James has, the famous NBA player in the Lakers. Oh, I wonder too. Usually, it would take quite some time before an Instagram account becomes popular with so many followers. But someone was able to get over 1 million people to follow him in just 4 hours and 44 minutes. How? Who is this person? Is it a movie star? A popular singer? Well, it was actually this 94-year-old man. So, who is this man? His name is Sir David Attenborough. He has created countless TV shows about nature. And at 94, he's still a strong force for animals and the environment. His recent works have highlighted teeming creative problems such as plastic pollution and the climate problem. What an interesting man! Yeah! On September 24th, Mr. Adbert joined the social media site Instagram. In just 4 hours and 44 minutes after Mr. Adbert joined Instagram, over 1 million people had followed him. He set a Guinness World Record by being the fastest person to reach 1 million followers. That record was previously held by the actress Jennifer Aniston. He set a Guinness World Record just for joining Instagram and getting 1 million followers faster than a previous record holder? That's right! Mr. Attenborough's first post was a short video 
He says that he has joined Instagram to try to reach more people about ways we can tackle the climate problem. Clearly, lots of people are very interested in what Mr. Einberg has to say. Wow, this is so cool. Yep, it's pretty awesome. Now, let's move on to our next What's Up segment. What's Up segment number three. What's Up segment number three. Weird error in a video game. Microsoft released its rebooted flight simulator game software in August 2020, immediately wowing gamers with its hyper-realistic scenery, digitally distilled from satellite imagery. I heard that TJ Dixon liked to play an older version of this game like 10 years ago. He loved flying over the seas, but he was terrible at landing the planes. <laughs> The sim gives its users the ability to fly anywhere in the world, with our planet reconstructed with real-time weather conditions using Microsoft Bing mapping technology. With so much realism going on in this game, it's a little surprising that a huge terrifying hole was found in the middle of Brazil. A gamer, nicknamed Reversed Window, was the first to report this freaky discovery. He not only reported this error, but he was brave enough to pilot an airplane down into it to see what is in there. Turns out it gets even stranger. There's an airport down there. Here, check out this video. The airport in question is Lagoa Nova, which in the real world is a little airstrip in Rio Grande do Norte and not an actual sinkhole. To get to the big hole in this sim, you just need to set Lagoa Nova as your destination. PC Gamer Magazine speculates that the glitch is most likely due to a typo and that the airfield's elevation above sea level may be misentered in a spreadsheet somewhere. It's pretty funny news for this week. Let's go to our last segment. What's up? Segment number four. Number four. Nurse donates her kidney to 18-month-year-old boy. This story takes place in St. Michael, Minnesota. There's a family of four. The mom and dad are called Mar Gloria and Brandon Hall. They have two kids, one daughter, and an 18 month old son. His name is Bodhi. Both kids had rare kidney disorder called congenital nephrotic syndrome. When Bodhi was born, his parents knew that his kidneys would one day fail. So he need kidney transplant. So Sam Sam, how many kidneys does a person have? Two. Two, and where are your kidneys? Right there, huh? John John, what does kidney do? A kidney purifies and cleans your blood. Yeah, it's a very important organ. So in order to do kidney transplants, you would need someone to donate his or her kidney. The dad, Brandon, could not do it because his blood type does not match. The mom, Gloria, could not do it neither because she already donated her kidney to her daughter. So she has only one kidney left. And the family was very desperate. The doctors suggest the family to post the need on the internet and see if anyone would come across interested to help. And guess what? There was a nurse, her name is Taylor Pikarainen. She read the story and she decided to sign up for donation. John, can you read what she writes? It's definitely part of my calling, helping people, she said. Even just we this story and seeing his picture on Facebook page he was the cutest thing ever yeah so after evaluation by the doctors they determined that Taylor is the best match donor out of the several possible donor candidates and the transplant was a great success so we are very happy for Bodhi and we are inspired by Taylor's selfless act and now it's our craft time. Today, Miss Craft has another awesome craft. 
for us. Let's do it! Hi boys and girls! How are you guys doing this week? This is Miss Craft. Welcome to our craft time. Hmm, last week I've received so many pictures from you guys. Let me show you. Hey, ain't that nice? I love you showing me your crafts. And I also love that you guys are enjoying making them. That gives me a lot of encouragement. Thank you so much. Hmm, now this week we learned about Peter went outside the boat to walk on the water to find Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful story? That's why we are going to make a boat this week. Ooh, a speed boat with covers. Some with covers, some with um, without covers. So let's start. It's very easy. All you need is to your pair of scissors. Um, one pencil or pen, your glue, and then a square paper from a letter size paper. Remember we talked about how to make a square paper? Yeah, and then little piece, little pieces when you cut off from the letter size paper, you save these little pieces for the cover, okay? So let's start. First of all, you fold it in half diagonally. And you opened it, you fold it in half diagonally again. Yes, and then you're gonna open it up, right? Fold it in half this way. Okay. Open it up, fold it in half on the other side, another way. There you go. So, these are the basics, okay? Then you put one of these corners, fold it in to the middle points, and you do it with all four corners. Okay, fold it into the middle point. Fold it into the middle points. Same thing. Into the middle point. All right, isn't that easy? Then, you take the left and right angle. So the right angle, you fold the bottom angle to the middle line, okay? Do it with the other side as well. Okay. Then you open it up. You do it again on the other side, okay? Fold it half. And another half here. All right. There we go. All right. Then, okay, in this, um, when you have the shape, okay, in this, the bottom angle, we fold it in the middle. Okay. Again, open it up. We fold it in this middle, like half. All right. Do the same thing with the other side. Okay, corner, fold it into the middle point. Okay, open it up, fold it again to the half middle point. There we go. All right. Then you open it up, you have all these marks, okay? So from the bottom, bottom mark to this, we fold this paper down, okay? So it's kind of like a, a weird diagonal line between the points and and this point. Okay, same thing with this guy. This point with this point. Okay, we go. So it'd be like a weird diagonal thing. Then we use whatever that we folded off out this point. We align with the line here. Okay. Same thing with this. We fold it, align with the line here. So, there we go. That's how it is, okay? All right, now this angle down, okay? Then we turn, um, yeah, turn this angle down and we follow this line, push the 
top angle, fold it, and then the bottom as well. We follow the, the marks that we made before, okay? When it hits the middle, we try to, we try to push this, okay? Like an, a stand-up triangle. Okay, after okay. you have this stand-up triangle, you fold this one out, okay? The one that, remember the one that you fold in? Yeah. And same thing with this side. We'll do the same thing with this side. And the bottom here. And then you push everything in the middle. So you have a stand-up triangle at the end. Then you flipped, you know, this bottom piece outside then you push the center triangle down like this okay then we flipped it around okay flip it around and turn it around and we put this angle folding it into the middle point okay after that we take the left and right angle fold it into the middle point as well This side too. Mm, all right. So after that, you see there's a little line here. We fold a little line here just to make sure. Okay, and then after that, you're gonna pull pull this out. Okay, push this out and push this down here. Okay, push this out and make this fold a triangle here. Push this down up. Okay. Push this to stand up. Push this to then up and fold a triangle and form like a bolt. See this? And form a, a bolt. Make sure you, you you fold it on the side to make it stand up. There we go. And on the back it looks like this, okay? On the bottom. Then these two guys, we're gonna flip it inside. Okay. Remember we have our full line and we're gonna follow the full line to flip this inside, okay? Same thing with this guy. We're gonna follow the full line to slip this inside. If the triangle is a bit longer, it's fine. Just let it stay, okay? This is the, the bow that we have, the bottom version. And then we need to get out, you know, the extra piece of paper when we were cutting this square out of um, a, a letter size paper. First of all, you fold this in half. Okay. okay, then you lay it down. You flip the boat upside down and you align the point to the middle line, okay? Okay. And then you take out your pen and you draw a line here. Yeah, and a line here. Okay. And then that's that's how you determine the angle of your bowl. And then we flipped it around and fold it. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of like um, the glue line of our boat. Okay. We're gonna glue I'm gonna glue this. Okay. But then before we glue it we gotta cut off the side a little bit because um it's not the gluing area it's not will not be that big. So we're gonna cut off this part just leaving a little bit so we can glue it to the boat. Okay, then with um, this guy, I'm gonna flip it 
Okay, we're gonna make a little shade, like a glass area here. All right, so after that, we are going to um, glue this, okay? We're gonna put glues in here. And then glues in the inside flap as well, a little bit. And then we're gonna put it, glue it in, in between this, okay? All right, we're gonna push it in. Since there's glues inside, okay, we're gonna push it in and wait till the glue is dry. We'll do the other side, okay? After the glue is um, dry and we glued the other side, okay? And after it's done, there we go. Here is our speedboat. Hey boys and girls, isn't that nice, our speed bow? I hope that by making this bow, it will remind us of today's story that our faith needs to take in action. Stepping outside of our comfort zone, like stepping outside of the boat to walk on water, leaving our comfort zone is a must. And it also help us to understand and get to know and experience Jesus more. I hope you enjoy today's craft. See you next week. Bye-bye. Hi, kids. This is Teacher Candy. I'm one of the leaders for Kids Virtual Groups. I can't wait to see you and to talk to you soon. Let us close in prayer. Thank you, God, for Teacher Esther sharing today. Learning we can have faith to do great things when we fix our eyes on you. God, Please help us practice what we learned today. Bless us with a good week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. Number three. <clears throat> what's, what's up segment, segment number one? one? What's up, what's up segment? Oh. What's up segment number one? So for... What's up segment number one? So for... What's up segment?